If there is gonna be a cure for my acne, it is not gonna be this. I'm gonna find a different method that doesn't take away one of my major sources of happiness. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be walking you guys through my skincare journey. Last week I posted a quick skincare routine video where I just showed you guys the products that I use. I will be diving deeper into that today and why my skincare routine is the way that it is. So I do want to preface this by giving a little disclaimer that everyone's skin is different. I'm not a dermatologist. We all have different skin type skin allergies, so what worked for me may not necessarily work for you, but I have personally trialed and aired so so many products and methods and just so many things in the last decade of me struggling with my skin and also doing like copious amounts of research on skincare both from skincare gurus and actual dermatologists as well so I'm just here to tell you what I've learned on my personal journey this is what my skin looks like currently without any foundation concealer, no skin makeup on. By all means, it's definitely not perfect, but considering what my skin looked like for most of my life, it's a huge improvement. I definitely still have a lot of scarring going on, but as of right now, I don't have any actual acne on my face. So I'm gonna share with you guys how I got to this point because, oh my God, it has been a long journey to get here, to say the least. I've had acne for most of my life. I will insert some pictures here so you can see what my skin looked like throughout the years. So I've tried so many different products, a lot of drugstore products that are targeted towards acne. We all know the clean and clear drugstore products, the Neutrogena acne line or whatever that was popular like back in the day. And that's what I started out by using like when I was pretty young. I honestly think those products did the most damage to my skin and probably destroyed my skin barrier for the long term, which is also probably why I had acne for so long. So when I was in high school, I was very determined to get rid of my acne. You know, it was a huge insecurity of mine because a lot of people around me didn't really have acne. When I did, I tried so many different things and I'm gonna keep saying that because I did. So I was doing some research and I came across some doctor on YouTube talk about how your diet has a huge effect on your skin. I tried cutting out carbs and sugar sugar for some time in high school, but I have a sugar addiction. So it was, it was so, so hard for me to do that. I literally struggled so much that I was like, I can't do this. If there is going to be a cure for my acne, it is not going to be this because I cannot cut out sugar. <laughs> I cannot cut out carbs. It, it's just it's too hard. It's not possible for me. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna find something else. I'm gonna find a different method that doesn't take away one of my major sources of happiness. So I also went to the doctor for my skin as well. Let me also say that I tried everything short of Accutane, basically. Accutane was actually gonna be the next thing that I tried, but I ended up clearing my skin before I needed to do it. And I also wanna say that I've fortunately never suffered from cystic acne. So if that's the sort of acne that you're experiencing right now, I might not be the best person to give you advice just because I've never really experienced it. I've just experienced like regular acne, but it was still, it was very, very persistent. It just like never went away. So when I went to the doctor, they put me on antibiotics. Um, I don't remember the specific ones I went on. So I took meds for it and it didn't really do anything. So I just stopped taking them. And then in the summer of 2020, I think a lot of us can relate. That's when the skincare world online Line sort of popped off when Hiram started becoming popular, you know, when the other skincare gurus like James Welsh, Susan Yara, all the other skincare gurus started really popping off on YouTube and on TikTok. So a lot of us fell down a skincare rabbit hole, myself included. And so I bought like all new skincare that summer. I followed Hiram's advice religiously and basically my skin got worse, so much worse. And I was so confused because I was doing so much research. I was following all of these people people online who were giving advice and using all the products that they recommended, but my skin was not having it. So it took me a while to sort of get out of that and to heal my skin. But the one skincare guru that I think helped me the most is Leah Yu. She is a skincare YouTuber and also the owner of Crave Beauty. And what I really liked about her is that she really focused on emphasizing how important it is to maintain a healthy skin barrier. I didn't realize for all of those years that the reason my skin kept breaking out and it wouldn't stop was because my skin barrier was so damaged. Because I was so obsessed with 
my acne and helping my acne for almost all of the 10 years, I was always using some kind of acne treatment, whether it was labeled as acne treatment or it was an exfoliant, but I was, I was still breaking out and my skin didn't clear until I realized that I needed to treat my skin like it was wounded essentially because that is essentially what acne is. Using all of these harsh products, harsh actives and exfoliants was really just damaging my skin barrier further when it really just needed something to repair it. And when I discovered this, everything changed. I sort of redid my entire skincare routine to something that was super simple and I cut out all actives and that is when my skin started to improve. And not only did my acne improve, but the overall state of my skin was evidently improving too. I always thought I had really oily skin, like for the past like 10 years, if anyone asked me what my skin type was, I would tell them it's oily because it was just very oily at the time. But after I started repairing my skin barrier, my skin isn't even oily anymore. It still does produce some oil, but the amount of oil it produces now is so significantly less than how it used to be. I used to wake up and my face was essentially like an oil slick and now like I can go without washing my face in the morning because it's just not even like oily and this is because like when your skin barrier is really damaged your skin overproduces a lot of oil to combat the fact that your skin barrier isn't there to retain any moisture into your skin so it's just it's just going crazy it's overproducing oil so now you may be wondering what are the actual steps you can take to repair your skin barrier if you have acne so my first recommendation is to either cut out and any exfoliating products or really lessen the frequency that you use the exfoliants. For me, I actually just completely cut out exfoliants. I haven't used any exfoliant in almost a year and my skin is in its best state as it ever was. But if you do feel like you really want to use an exfoliant, you can definitely still use them, but definitely limit the frequency that you do. There are a lot of barrier repairing ingredients out there that you can look out for. One of my personal favorites is any product that has oats. My skin just loves. Even when my skin was in its most sensitive state and almost every product would irritate it, anything that contained oats would soothe my skin and my skin would just react so well to it. So I think the product that I was using at the time was the First Aid Beauty Oat Toner. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of other ingredients that are really repairing for the skin barrier. There are so many YouTubers out there, so many skincare gurus that really go deeply into that. I'll link some of their videos down below because they can probably explain it a lot better than I can. And so my last tip is to just keep your skincare routine as simple as possible. You know, with skincare, I really do think that less is more, especially when you have sensitive and acne prone skin. So yeah, just keep it to basically the bare minimum. If you watched my my previous skincare video you would know that my skincare routine is only three steps. At nighttime I only do an oil cleanser, a water-based cleanser, and then a moisturizer. And then in the morning I just do a water-based cleanser, moisturizer, and sunscreen. And that is really all I need to keep my skin healthy and in its best state. So I really recommend just keeping it as simple as possible. Okay so now I'm gonna go into some product recommendations. So if you're not already double cleansing, I would strongly recommend that you do. Using an oil-based cleanser is just so effective at removing all your makeup, sunscreen, other impurities, and even if you don't wear makeup, you know, you should be wearing sunscreen on a daily basis, so I would recommend an oil-based cleanser to really remove the layer of sunscreen as well. So some of the oil cleansers that I would recommend are the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm, the Vanilla Co Clean It Zero, which is the one that I use, and the DHC Deep Cleansing Oil, and I will be linking all of these products in the description box down below. All right, so the second step of the double cleanse is to use a water-based cleanser. So some of my recommendations for these are any CeraVe cleanser will do the trick. The Aveeno Oat Cleanser is the one that I use, which is a really strong contender, um, probably my favorite cleanser of all time, to be honest. And any cleanser by La Roche-Posay is also a really great option. So these cleansers all just do a really good job of removing any impurities without being too harsh on the skin. When you cleanse your face, it can be one of the most damaging parts of a skincare routine. So it's important to not use one that's really stripping or has any really harsh ingredients in it. All right, so for my recommended moisturizers, I would recommend the Etude House Soonjung Barrier Cream, which is the one that I use. It's a nice, really thick moisturizer. I love it for the winter time here in Canada because my skin gets really dry in the winter time and I need something that's thicker and more nourishing. Again, anything from the Aveeno Oat line, I really love. 
love. So Aveeno has a oat gel moisturizer, I believe, and I have that one as well. I'm planning on using that one more during the summertime when I don't need as thick of a moisturizer. Another thicker wintertime moisturizer that I really love is the COSRX Ceramide Cream. This one was an old favorite of mine. It has a lot of really good ingredients for repairing the skin barrier if you feel like your skin barrier is damaged or your skin is irritated in any way. And another gel moisturizer recommendation that I have is the Clinique Gel Moisturizer. This one I actually used for a really long time and honestly, it's just a really basic, simple gel moisturizer. It gets the job done. As for my sunscreens, if you're not already on the Asian sunscreen bandwagon, I strongly recommend that you get on that as soon as possible because Asian sunscreens are just so much nicer on the skin. They don't feel thick, heavy, and like greasy like a lot of the sunscreens that I find here. So most of my favorite sunscreens are definitely Asian sunscreens and you can order these from websites like Style, Vana, or YesStyle, which is where I order my sunscreens. I will also give two recommendations for sunscreens that you can buy in the drugstore here in Canada or the US if you don't feel like ordering from these websites. So my first Asian sunscreen recommendation is the Skin Aqua Moisture Milk, which is the one that I use. This one is my all-time favorite sunscreen. It's really moisturizing. It doesn't irritate my skin at all. I can use it in the eye area without it stinging at all, and it layers really well under makeup as well. Another recommendation I have is the Can Make Mermaid sunscreen. Um, this one is pretty popular and for good reason because it is just a really nice lightweight sunscreen that really gets the job done. And another good one is the Misha Essence sunscreen, I believe it's called. Um, that one is just really lightweight. It does have fragrance in it, so if you don't want fragrance in your skincare, I would avoid it, but I personally don't think fragrance is that bad unless you do have sensitivities to it. Okay, so if you want a sunscreen that you can buy at the drugstore in Canada or in the US, one that I would recommend is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost sunscreen. This one also has fragrance in it, so keep that in mind if you don't want fragrance in your skincare. But I will say with this sunscreen, you have to be really careful not to get it too close to your eyes because it stings. Like, I tried the sunscreen around my eyes and I thought I was blind. So just don't get it near your eyes and you should be good. Another drugstore sunscreen that I really do like is the Garnier Ultra Fluid, I think it's called. It's pretty lightweight. It's not as nice in texture as the Asian sunscreens that I recommended, but it's still not bad in comparison to a lot of other drugstore sunscreens that I tried here. So those are my main product recommendations for the categories of skincare that I think are the most important. If you do want to use other products like any actives, I do have some honorable mentions of products that I do like. I don't personally use these just because my skin is really sensitive and I just like to keep it super simple, but if you do want to use any other products, here are my honorable mentions for ones that I do still like. So if you do really want to use an exfoliator, I would definitely recommend the Paula's Choice 2% BHA. It's a super popular option for a reason. It's probably one of the least damaging exfoliants. Just make sure you don't overuse it because it still is an exfoliant and it can be harsh on your skin if you use it too much. Another product that I really do love if you want to use a toner in your skincare routine is the First Aid Beauty Oat Toner. I really like the way that it made my skin feel and even when my skin was super damaged and super sensitive, this toner would really help to soothe my skin and sort of get rid of any redness that I had. Again, anything from the Aveeno Oat line, I really love. I think their products are really great, um, especially for anyone with sensitive skin. Anyone who has rosacea as well or acne prone skin, I think the Oat line is really great. I know I didn't really talk about um, reducing acne scarring in my video, mostly because my main tip for reducing acne scarring is to just use sunscreen because over time the scarring will go away and the sunscreen really prevents your scarring from getting any worse. But if you do want to use an active to sort of speed that process along, I would recommend the Inkyless Niacinamide Serum. That one I do really like as well. It's pretty gentle on your skin. All right, so those are all the product recommendations that I had with me today. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Let me know if you have any product recommendations of your own or if you have any Thing about your skincare journey that you would like to share. I would love to hear about it. Yeah, make sure you follow me on my socials. My Instagram and TikTok are linked in the description box down below, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!